I love my cat. Whee! Hello, everyone. Welcome to Learning Space. Uh, my name is Nicole Gallucci. As you see, we only have the one window this time, which is weird for me. Uh, but that means all the tech should work. So obviously, if you can't hear me, please yell at me in the comments. Uh, I'm Nicole Gucci from CosmoQuest, uh, and I am here with Colin Wilson, my coworker here at the STEM Center at SIUE, Southern Illinois University, Edwardsville. And we are going to be doing some science demos and talking about um, science resources for the classroom and for informal educators, and especially if you're in Southern Illinois, how you can get that stuff from us. So uh, we are going to get started. First, I want to remind you guys, you can, um, if you can share the link. Uh, that will be awesome and help us out a lot. Uh, you can leave us a comment on YouTube. I'll be checking that. Hi, James. And oops. <laughs> and on the uh, Hangout page itself. But if you guys can maybe keep it in one spot, decide amongst yourselves. <laughs> um, and then the uh, Q&A app for Hangouts as well, so you can interact with us, say hello, leave a comment, ask a question. Uh, that'll be really cool. So let's just get started. I know you have lots of fun demos, science demos. I do have some demos uh, planned. So With science. We have a bunch of a bunch of stuff here at the science center or this the STEM center. So I uh, uh, just grab some that look like they'd be fun. Yeah. So this is the fun one that I do a lot with uh, educators. So you know, people watching learning spaces probably know the answer to some of these. So I can I have a ping pong ball, and I'll just it ask China Nicole. On it. it says China on it. <laughs> I assure you, it's a ping pong ball. It's a ping pong ball, not China. Not also. China. Um, they are hard to tell apart sometimes, but <laughs> if I drop this ping pong ball slash china, it's going to go, um, Nicole, up to my hand, farther than my hand, lower than my hand. Lower than your hand. Lower than my hand. That's my hypothesis. Right. Yeah, I didn't even make the, the video. It got a little bit up A little there. bit? Okay. So, um, <laughs> Let's try it again. So, yeah. We got yeah, yeah. just above the lower third. Not quite. Not quite. <laughs> so, um, you know, that's something called a... Uh, conservation of energy. I drop it from a certain height and it goes down and um, it retains some of the energy but a lot of the energy is lost. So that also should happen with this thing. It's a little popper. Oops. Rubber thingy. It's already popped. <laughs> um, it's a little rubber cup and if I um, fold it inside out. See, I'm not making it up. Yeah, there's China. Right. This one says five. This is five. Okay. So if I drop five, like so, it's going to pop and ah! <laughs> it also just went in, It just went horizontal for, yeah. for those of you watching at home or it went horizontal. On the but again, not as not as far as my hand. Mm -hmm. So we lost some energy, even though this thing snaps and um, gives us some elastic energy back. So if we combine these, Nicole, are we going to get? Up to my hand, above my hand, lower than my hand. They both went lower. Okay. So, so you would think together they might still be lower. Right. Right. So we'll try. Ooh. <laughs> Neither. Neither. Um, broke. Okay. Okay. Let's try one more time. This might not be high enough. Let's try. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> okay. That now did that leave a crack? Uh, or are those pre-existing? Um, you didn't hear that. It just bounced <laughs> off the ceiling. <laughs> I think those those were there before. Those were there before those us. Were before. We're gonna go with that. So that um that is an example of what we would call a discrepant event. Yeah. Which, um, can yeah. you explain that a little bit? Because this is a term I'm recently becoming. A discrepant event is something that um so there are lots of things that are surprising, new things that are really interesting, but there are some things that you think you know the answer, and then it turns out to be something else, right. and that's a discrepant event. Right. So. Um, looking at the bouncing of both these things, you think you know what the combined effect is going to be, but it's something totally different. Right, right, right. Can you tell us why this uh, actually snaps back and goes, well, hits the ceiling and scares the poo out of me? Yeah. <laughs> so the reason is that uh, that this little popper thing, when it snaps, um, the first time I snapped it, it um, popped up and didn't go as high as my hand because it lost some, not all the energy stayed with this thing. If all the energy stayed with this thing, it should leave from my hand, go right back up to the same height. But some of it's lost, and it goes into the earth and shoves the earth a little bit, but that mm. happens all yeah. the time. Yeah. It all evens <laughs> out. Um, maybe it heats up this table uh, a little, because the elastic energy turns into thermal energy. Oh, my desk is warm. 
Yeah, that's why your desk is warm. <laughs> just constantly Thanks. getting Thanks. Um, so some of that energy is lost. When I combine them, it puts some energy into the desk slash earth, but the same amount of energy into ping pong ball, mm -hmm. which is much smaller. It's only the size of China. <laughs> so it goes rocketing up to the ceiling because it gets a lot of elastic energy pumped into it, which um, before it was deceptive how the amount of energy we had because it was going into something huge and right. Didn't relatively immovable. The Earth shift <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> under China. Yeah, so we have lots of um, fun little and not so little things um, mm -hmm. like that around here. And uh, although we, I, I live here at the STEM Center, we don't get to talk about it much on CosmoQuest. So I'm excited to talk to you about that. Uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit about what the STEM Center is and does. Sure. So the STEM Center... Um... Oh, sorry. STEM is Science, Technology, Engineering, Mathematics. I know that sounds like I'm over-explaining for some of you, but some of you may not be familiar with that. So let's say that first. <laughs> I was going to do the same. Oh, okay. Um, there you go. I, I learned recently that a, when it first got proposed by the uh, National Science Foundation, they were calling it SMET which is the same letters, and they just say, well, we'll just put them all together. And somebody said, it would probably be better if it's an actual word. And STEM has connotations of growing and, and learning like and students. Yeah, and SMET sounds awful. Sounds so. like SMET. Um, it's terrible. So uh, at the STEM Center, um, it's a research center. Um, so we do things like CosmoQuest, um, where we have citizen science projects that are actually generating new science. It's a um, education center where we um, assist teachers, that's a lot of what I do, and uh, have resources for them, have curricula for them, have different things that they can try in their classrooms to improve their students' experience. And then we have outreach as well, mm -hmm. which is actually going out and delivering. So um, we have people who go out and will do after-school programs, who will do sort of cameos in classrooms, um, who will do uh, professional development for teachers, that's something that I do too. Um, and so we, we just generally try to engage all the um, educators and community in Southern Illinois with uh, different uh, STEM-related topics. Yeah, it's, it's a great resource. And i um, kind of wishing I could take the camera back to the storeroom and show everyone. Maybe at the end I'll try on my iPad, because it'll probably break everything, but we'll do it later. Um, it's like this magical wonderland of science toys. And where last place I worked, we had a little closet mm -hmm. <laughs> of science toys that we used for astronomy outreach. This place is just like... The last place I worked, we had a large room like this, but it was uh, very messy and oh. was all over the place. So this is both organized and large. Yes, so. Thank you, Elizabeth, who was yes. a re recent learning space guest who <laughs> helped us organize a lot uh, before you came. So, <laughs> yeah. So, um, so why don't you tell us a little bit more about your background um, in science education? Sure. Um, I uh, recently started at the at the STEM Center. I started in August. Yeah, you're a newbie. That's true. <laughs> um, so, uh, I started just recently here. Before this, I was at the uh, Science Center in uh, St. Louis. And um, before that, I was not an educator at all. I was a researcher. I, I figured, you know, I liked science so much that I wanted to be doing it all the time. Um, and so I actually had a rotating series of things that I wanted to do. When I was a little kid, mm -hmm. I wanted to be a paleontologist, no questions asked. There's a, they might be giant song. <laughs> really? About that. About that? Yeah. About, oh, because everyone I'm likes I'm a paleontologist. Being, yeah. Um, I, I mean, I was, like, really serious. Yeah. And I, uh, so I also was not big on looking up pronunciations, so I still have a lot of weird pronunciations for dinosaurs. <laughs> um, but my brother and I are, but we're both really, really interested in it. My sister is studying paleontology now, so oh, it's wow. in the family. Oh, cool. Um, and uh, so I definitely want to be a paleontologist. There was nothing else that was interesting to me. Um, and then I took a really uh, awesome astronomy course in uh, high school with my uh, teacher, J.R. Kandasta who was amazing, and got me really, really interested in astronomy. So then, no, uh, paleontology, whatever, I want to be an astronomer. <laughs> and then I started doing astronomy and um, was taking some uh, geology courses as part of it and realized that I was really liking the geology courses mm -hmm. and not so much the, you know, um, quantum mechanics stuff, which was very hard. Um, 
And so I decided, okay, well, I want to be a planetary astronomer. Mm -hmm. And so I went to grad yeah. school and started doing that. And then realized, you know, this is really great. And I was, I was doing projects with meteorites, and it was very interesting. But I thought, you know, I really like for my geology courses going somewhere and knocking something off with a hammer and taking a chunk of it. And I really like touching stuff. So I, I guess I just want to be a straight-up geologist. Oh, no more. Yeah, yeah there's no uh, missions to Mars yet. So I right, can't really fulfill right. that. No manned ones. No human, but yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, and I, I did all this. I, I got to my master's and kind of finished with my master's and thought, you know, what do I want to be doing? And, and realized that I liked learning about all these... Um, science topics, but I really, really liked explaining them to people. Mm -hmm. So I started working at the Science Center in St. Louis, doing um, education outreach stuff, and in particular as a teen program there, that's a really great program, the YES program. And I worked with teens there and um, covered a bunch of science topics, and then I started here and started working more with teachers to pass on that knowledge and help think of creative ideas to engage different topics. Wow, very cool. That is that is very cool, and it sounds familiar. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I like doing science, but I really like explaining it, <laughs> and and uh, having trouble keeping focus on one mm -hmm. tiny little area of research. Mm -hmm. So I totally get that. Like That's the cool. universe. Like the what? Well, <laughs> if only, but yeah. If 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 your dissertation was the whole universe, you'd never graduate. Right. Never ever graduate. So. Awesome, awesome. So what did you start to do uh, for your master's in planetary? No, in geology, sorry. In geology, I went uh, camping in Quebec for about a month, um, which was really fun, and uh, gathered up samples in a field area um, of a pretty rare kind of rock called a northosite. Okay, I've actually heard of that. Really? Yes, I don't know have. much geology, but... <laughs> you have because um, it is hardly found anywhere. It's found in this sort of series of... Um, of deposits, one in the northern hemisphere, one in the southern hemisphere, um, that if you match up the continents again, they all oh, line okay. up into a northern trend and gotcha. a southern trend. Gotcha. They all, um, you know, there was a period billions of years ago where there was a bunch of them that formed and then they stopped and there were none before and none after. Okay. So it's sort of mysterious. So you can only find them in a couple places and also like half the moon. Okay, the highlands that's and the moon. probably where I've heard of it then. <laughs> the highlands of the moon Lacavala. are, are uh, all in north of site. And actually okay. in uh, Jay Arkandasta's class, um, he should, I should, you should let him call it, get yeah. some royalties for <laughs> all the promotion I'm doing. Um, but one of the things that still I remember vividly like hearing this and, and thinking like, wow, okay, was, um, you know, there's highlands in the moon that are this white, type of rock, and that rock is called a northosite. Mm -hmm. And here's a chunk of a northosite. Um, right. And then, you know, and the, the lowlands in the moon are basalt, and um, here's a chunk of basalt. And so the idea that the moon, which is this relatively airless, faraway body that's, mm -hmm. you know, untouchable and, and all this stuff, um, is made up the same stuff. The rules are the same there as here. Yeah. It's yeah. really exciting and interesting. Cool. Very cool. So what brought you here to the STEM Center? Um, we just seemed so lovely in our little basement. You did. You did. You know, it's. <laughs> I, I liked the idea of um, of serving a large community. Mm. You know, that that's that's what really excites me here. That um, you know, every day I I have uh, parents coming in who are homeschooling their kids and they want some classroom equipment. Some teachers coming in that want to. Um, either try out classroom equipment and then talk to their administrators about getting it, or they they have a little bit and they want to do something special just for one lesson, so they get something really interesting to try. Um, I work with people making up curricula. I work with um, you know middle schoolers doing science projects. Um, I advise people, uh, you know, test out things, uh, organize, and and you know sort of. You get to do everything, and you get to support a really wide uh, area. Yeah. Do you want to try another demo, maybe? Sure. I have a nice. And I will remind here. you guys uh, to hi Guido, um, to also uh, send us your comments and questions. And Guido just posted, "I am a paleontologist. They might be giants." <laughs> yes, that is that's the song I was singing in my head. <laughs> so, oh, and oh, sorry, Guido's over here on YouTube. Um, I posted a great workplace tour. Oh, okay, so Vito's asking, so I, since I mentioned doing a brief workplace tour, 
Um, we did do a CosmoQuest workplace tour. That video uh, is private, and you only got access to it if you took our user survey, uh, which is part of my citizen science motivation research that I'm doing. Um, and the, it, do I plan on remaking it with Google Glass? That's a good idea. I may have to think of that, <laughs> um, especially when we move, which we'll get to in a bit. Um, uh, Michael says hello. James says science will put your eye out depending on the bounds. And does science-based poo differ from civilian poo? I think that's because I said something about poo, probably. Anyway, <laughs> don't listen to me. Listen to this guy. All right, thanks, you guys. Sorry, just catching up on the comments. Um, so, yeah, let's go ahead with another demo. Sure. Um, and this demo, uh, I think, you know, James's uh, question, which I think was um, maybe he didn't expect it, a specific answer, <laughs> but I think it's an interesting thing to, to think about, you know, science versus civilian, and I, I feel like you can do science in a lot of different areas. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the chemistry activities I like really doing is uh, a kitchen chemistry demo which involves combining all the different ingredients with cake to find out what are the exact um, reactions in cake that if you want to have a fluffier cake, what do you need to add more of? And you sort of, awesome. you know, back hack, like, make your own recipe for a cake. And We're going to do this, right, for Tia 10? Yeah, we should do this. <laughs> okay, sweet. We should do this. Um, so this is one... This is not cake. This is Sorry. not cake. This is called a polydensity bottle. Um, this is a demo that I, I didn't know about until I came to the mm -hmm. STEM Center, and I really, really like it, so I pull it out a lot. Um, but the idea is that there are, you can see, so there's some clear liquid, and in the midst of that clear liquid is are some white beads um, and some red beads. And uh, this is just in a soda, two-liter soda bottle. So if I shake this up, um, something cool is going to happen. And it's going to... It's a party! They will separate into oh, that's cool. white and red beads, and then the best part happens. They come back together, so there's two parts. To Whoa! This. Okay, that's been sitting on the desk for like a year, and I've never actually seen someone do it. Right? I, <laughs> how lame am I? So, <laughs> so <laughs> the question with this is. Oh, and these are coming down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they come back together because they started off in the middle. Oh my gosh! So they have to end so up in the middle. What the hell? <laughs> I mean, so, heck. <laughs> um, so the, the question is, uh, why does this happen? Tell us why. Or maybe guess why. It's the clear liquids are different things. Oh, I have... I also have the sticker pointing at me. <laughs> it's fine. Well, it's fine. Okay. I, I probably would have guessed that anyway. <laughs> um... Well, you can tell you can tell two things. So because some because when you shook it up, it was cloudy, right? Like, it, was it was a little like, cloudy, yeah. Um, so things have buoyancy and they float at different levels depending on the liquid. So mm -hmm. if the buoyancy is changing, that means that the liquid is changing. Okay. So in here, first of all, the the first step is that they separated because they are um, beads of two different plastics. These are not just white beads; they are UV sensitive beads. I have a flashlight for that. There you go. There we go. Oh, so, <laughs> um, yeah, and it, it this might is why be... I grabbed. I, I I have this in my. Um, I, I did this for you guys in a previous oh, you, episode. With you don't UV need beads. to explain. Who everyone has a UV. Everybody UV has flashlight. a UV flashlight in there, and everybody has a meteorite oh, yeah. in their purse. Exactly. So there you so, go. A few of them have changed. Yeah. So some stuff. of them have, have changed sort of so, reddish. Yeah. So they're UV sensitive. So it's a different type of plastic than the red ones. So when we shake it up, we have some that are more buoyant than the liquid and some that are less buoyant than the liquid. Mm -hmm. And the liquid is a combination of isopropyl alcohol, water, and salt. And water and isopropyl alcohol are uh, mixable. Um, mm -hmm. As anyone who is over uh, 21 and you order a drink with ice in it, mm -hmm. and then your well, you drink gets watered down as the ice melts, um, right. you don't get separate layers. So uh, like whiskey, far less enjoyable. Yes. So water mixes with isopropyl alcohol, no problem, but salt water does not. Oh, okay. So they mix up, but as the salt sort of, you know, makes its presence felt, for lack of a better term, um, it uh, starts forcing its way in and, and makes them not cooperate. So first you get 
a salt water alcohol mixture, and mm -hmm. then you start getting salt water and alcohol, and the salt water goes to the bottom. Okay. And both sets of bees are more buoyant than salt water, and the alcohol goes to the top, and both sets of bees are less buoyant than alcohol. So as the as they start separating into two separate liquid regimes, they sort of push things back together. So how would an, an educator use this in the classroom then? Well, this is another example of a, of a discrepant event that um, things are, are floating. You think you know what's going to happen when they float. You, look, you see what it looks like here. If you mix it up, you expect them to end up in the middle, right. like most things. So that's a discrepant event, and it's also one that um, inspires something else that we talk about a lot called inquiry-based learning. So um, just like I did with Nicole, um, she said, you know, so why does that happen? And I said, why do you think it happens? <laughs> you know, I want um, the answer, guys. <laughs> it's something that is uh, contained both container-wise and mm -hmm. also in what's going on. There's no, you know, you can shake it up, you can do one thing, and then you can observe. And right. so you, as, a, as an educator, you have some control. You can make sure no one's going to lose their eye. Um, like with the ping-pong ball. Like with the ping-pong ball. Um, but it, it has a lot of... Uh, open-endedness mm -hmm. to it that puts the control of, of the lesson, um, of some parts of the lesson, into the hands of the learner. Cool. So it makes them more engaged in it. You know, I think um, everyone, if you like science, if you don't like science so much, if, you know, if you do it every day, if you just kind of, you know, flip through the science section of the newspaper every once in a while, Probably your least favorite part of science class was doing worksheets for like an hour. Yeah, that's you know, that's boring. Who who wants to who wants to just you know? And then how much of science is is inputting data? Right. Well, <laughs> when you get older. Yeah, yeah. You have to, you have to do that, but it's at least uh, new. You know, you're putting right. in data that no one's put in before. Right. You're, you're right. making graphs that no one's made before. So, doing things that no one's done before and exploring on your own is what real scientists do. And so you can model that in a semi-controlled way with, mm -hmm. you know, in a classroom by doing something like this. So teachers can come here, so a place like this. We were talking about this the other day. I don't know if there's even a list of other places like mm -hmm. our STEM center here. I mean, that's something we the, should look into. <laughs> there is some, <laughs> and there's, there's, a, uh, um, there's a, a Google map that, yeah, right. that tags all of them. Um, but they are sort of, it's not like... There's no one model for what a STEM center is. Yeah. yeah. Right? They don't all have the same stuff. That if you say there's an education department in a CUE, okay. that they're roughly similar to all the other education departments. Maybe they you know, fall into a school of education. Maybe they're in a school of arts and science. Mm -hmm. Maybe they have five faculty. Maybe they have 20 faculty. Maybe they have an externship. Maybe they don't. Um, but they're all sort of structured the same. STEM centers are, are not that way. Right, right. Sometimes they're attached to museums. Sometimes they're attached to universities. Sometimes they're independent. Sometimes they're an extension of the school system. It, it really depends on the area. Um, but they do all share this common mission of uh, encouraging STEM and being a resource for educators. So, so here, for this one, teachers can come here and not only get ideas, because, I mean, a lot of this stuff you could, I mean, the UV beads you have to kind of order online, but a lot <laughs> of the stuff you could get in the store, um, so they can come here to get ideas and the actual equipment mm -hmm. to either buy or rent from us. Yeah, most of it is is free. Mm -hmm. um, this would be free because they can take it, they can use it in their classroom, and they can bring it back. And as long as you bring it back, sing. it's free. Oh yeah, as long as you bring it back. Um, <laughs> some things, to... you know, if you need to get uh, just some baking soda, you can get that, and we'll just charge you. You know, we paid five dollars for the. Um, for the box, and you're using a hundredth of it, so give us a nickel. <laughs> um, so, you know, we, we do that, and um, a lot of it is is the expertise. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we know how these things work, and we can explain the science behind them. So you can, you know, some people are, are looking, and maybe they got a mini-grant, and mm -hmm. they're saying, you know, I, I think I want to get this um, saltwater-powered car, um, and I just got some money, um, but I don't know if it's going to work well. And so we'll borrow ours and test it out and see if you like it and yeah. then get your own. Yeah. Um, or they say, you know, we don't have any money, um, so, but I want to do something new. Then they don't need the car for, 100, for 365 days of the year. They need it for a week. Mm -hmm. And so they borrow it for a week and they bring it back. And someone takes it for another week and they bring it back. And 
all this stuff. It's uh, a lending library of science goodness. Yeah. <laughs> science demo yeah. goodness. It makes... And it is very large yes. and, and extensive. And, you know, there are... Um, and lots of times people ask for things... Um, like someone asked the other day for a spectroscope, and we have the diffraction glasses, yeah. and we have a spectrometer that hooks up to a digital readout, but we don't have just a tube with some demarcations on it that you can right. look at it and, and tell what the um, what gas you're looking at or whatever. Um, so I said we don't have that, but we probably should. So I spent some time today shopping around and looking for which ones we want to order because. People have asked for that, so we know it's a need. So we'll get one, and um, then the whole. Wait, are these like the gas tubes? Well, we have the gas tubes. We have the gas tubes, but we and we have the glasses to go with it. Okay, right, I see right. What you're and so the glasses, yeah. you can say. You can say, see the lines, but you can't measure. Yeah, Wait, yeah. There's a there's a bright yellow one, yeah. and there's a bright green one. But to tell that there's a bright one at 760 angstroms or something, you need a spectron or a spectroscope. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um. So that's something that people asked about that we didn't have, and okay. so you know we've got some money. We'll shop around and see if we can get one. So you're the resource. I mean, you're the resource center manager, which was a position that went unfilled for far too long around there. <laughs> I think it, it was it was shared. It was right? shared. That yeah, so, maybe that's it. It was shared. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just the post. I don't know what's happening. So ev everyone. But you really was, you really brought it and made a thing. My understanding Organized is that everyone was doing it kind of in their spare time, yeah. and nobody has spare time. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. It wasn't really getting done. Um, but yeah, so I, you know, I can take some time and shop around for spectroscopes mm -hmm. or. I know you want to work on the, the. There's actually a dearth of astronomy materials here. Yeah, yeah. Um, we can we can definitely work on bringing some more astronomy material, which is sad because Pamela and I live here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but most of my demos are, you know, made of crap that you get at the grocery store. Right. But we need we can really work on getting some higher quality astronomy stuff. Yeah, here as well. yeah, and and that was the thing, you know, we we looked into. Well, let's get some like hands-on astronomy models, and there's yeah. and most of them like well, you know this is good, but it does the same thing as a styrofoam ball on a stick. So right, right. Let's just stick with that. <laughs> um, but we can have a catalog of things that could be done with a styrofoam ball on a stick. Sure, and sure. teachers can. <laughs> which which brings me to the other the other part of what we do here, where we have sometimes people come in for materials, and sometimes they come in for consultations. Mm -hmm. So they'll come in and say. Um, I want to do something with an eclipse, but I don't have um, an eclipse model. Uh, do you guys have one? And I'll say, well, you don't need one. Do you have Oreos? Do you have, you know, we, we have some styrofoam balls you can borrow. I did and, the uh, Oreo one at Geek Girl Con. Yeah. <laughs> well, the moon phase one, but yeah. That was good because then we had Oreos in the office. We had so many weeks. Oreos. Well, that was when Pamela did it because she bought too many. <laughs> That's okay. So we got a comment from, uh, from Guido... Saying when you put STEM Center in a Google search, SIUE comes up as the second result. Yay! That may also be because we're connected to CosmoQuest, and you probably have CosmoQuest in your search history too. Well, that's why we're the front runners. That's why. Oh, okay. Not just on his browser. You're saying in general. In general. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you want to check out the website, um, so you can either Google STEM SIUE, and that'll take you to our official university website. However, uh, people here have been working really hard on a uh, WordPress-powered site. Big surprise. <laughs> Again, since we share server resources with CosmoQuest. Um, uh, it's called. It's a website called stemideas.org. I'm very happy they got that domain, mm -hmm. whoever was, was clever to come up with that. Um, and so what you the building here is you can it lists the research that we do. Oh, what do you want to point out? Oh, the resource center. Here we go, resource center um, tab. And then there's a button there for browse library. And you can go on there and search things by tag. Things. So the, um, the the ones on front there, we have a, a large collection of Vernier Lab Quests, which are handheld computers that have different probes that plug into them. Okay. But um, if Nicole was doing um, an astronomy outreach thing for... Oh, God, you're going too fast for me. Well... Informal, is that... That's yeah, right. informal. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, sure. Yeah. And she did. She wanted, you know, books. So, or or whatever we have, then she can search. And like I said, there's, or, or like we said, there's a. Um, this is not our, not our strongest suit at the moment, but we do have some Ooh, stuff. Stars to and do. planets, astronomy for dummies. Mm -hmm. Got a lot of books. Oh, we have an IP. Really? Where is that? <laughs> I'm like, there's an IP that isn't part of. My eight inch Why, telescope. Nicole? It's in the STEM center. Oh my gosh! No, I need a, I need a red angle. That's what I'm missing the most. So, and a green laser pointer. 
Excellent. So people can look on here if they if they need ideas, and we have a lot of these book resources that they can look at, and they can also come in for a consultation and say, um, yeah, you know, I want to do an Eclipse activity. Well, like, I, I have a great activity that you can do with just the um, stuff that you have in your classroom right now. Uh, or one teacher came in the other day, she wanted to do something about renewable energy, and she wanted to really touch on everything, and so... I said, well, we, you know, we have this, act, we have this um, toy to play with. We have this and this and this is, you know, you might structure your lesson plan like this. And you know, she gave me feedback on, well, you know, normally I do it like this. And so we came up with a, a lesson plan for her to introduce um, renewable energy in a in a really hands-on way, and then a, an inquiry um, lesson to go after that for them to explore things on their own to. Um, you know, look at the the best practices for renewable energy. What's the best wind turbine design? Um, do does it matter for this um, hydroelectric wheel if I use hot water or cold water mm -hmm. or something like that? Cool. Um, so they come in sometimes with just a blank slate. Yeah. And we can help them with that. They come in sometimes with, I want to do this topic. What have you got? And we walk through some things. Or they come in and say, I looked on your online inventory. I really want the um, the water cycle model, mm -hmm. and say, great, we got that. Um, have you also considered the um, the oh the polydensity bottle that talks about uh, different changing buoyancies and different densities, um, which relates to atmospheric conditions, and you could tie those two together. Cool, cool, very cool. We try to to have people leave with more things than they thought they were going to leave with. And yes, yes. That way I've we seen, know we're I've encouraging them. I've seen that them. look um, of the, they leave with the, the bin mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. of stuff. <laughs> and it's like, okay! And especially with the, the student teachers. So we serve the student teachers yeah. who are in the education department here, and, and they have the, the, the doe eyes, the, mm -hmm. the deer mm -hmm. in headlights look, and they're like, okay, I'm going to do this now. Uh, so. that, that is an important group that we work with because mm -hmm. you know a lot of teachers um, want to change but they have a way that they're comfortable doing it and so mm -hmm. it is it is more difficult um, and you know I, I I really don't think you should if you like inquiry you like discrepant events don't change your whole curriculum try one lesson and then next yeah. year try two right. and then um, but with, with <clears throat> student teachers you can also you know they're about to generate their uh, their own curricula, what they do every year, and if we can work with them while they're still student teaching, then by the time they um, have their placement, then it'll be already ingrained and they can get off and running, and we can sort of help the next generation of students that way. Cool. I want to ask you about next-gen science standards, but I think we should do a fun thing first. Okay. <laughs> um, oh, how about a game? Okay. okay. I'll lose. Okay. I, <laughs> I so. guarantee you I'll lose. Ooh. So I was watching him behind the scenes. I was watching him put all the stuff together this afternoon. And I'm like, I'm so excited! We're going to play! Is this the one where we need uh, more of the table? Yeah, the camera? I'll have to show the, the... Okay. Hang on, you're getting a little dizzy. I'm going to put the, this webcam up and point it at the table. Um, so... What? The, uh... <laughs> <laughs> um... So this is the like the shell game at the um, at the carnival. Yeah. So I have. Three... You're gonna hustle me, aren't you? I I am. <laughs> That's what the shell game is all about. Um, Be skeptical. I uh, I have three cups and they all look the same and I'm going to put water, just a little bit of, just tap water, mm -hmm. into one of these cups. So he was actually rolling that thing with tap water on a giant cart across. <laughs> Water's heavy. <laughs> I don't think it had to be so I'm putting the cap on so you can't. You can get water all over my desk. Maybe I. At will. least it's not mud like I did for the comment. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was listening to that happen and <laughs> thought it's gonna be in this. Um, this might be too easy if I can't get this looking the same. I won't look. Give me patter, patter. I, I need patter. What? Just talk. Bob oh Bill. oh oh oh! You should have said vamp. Vamp. <laughs> I know how to vamp. Yeah. So um, behind us, uh, we're, we're inadvertently uh, um, 
we are we are packing. If you're wondering why there's boxes behind me, we are packing. We are getting ready to move. We'll talk about that briefly, I'm sure. Um, so yes, uh, I'm not going anywhere too far, but we are moving on to a different spot on campus. Hence right. the boxes. And that's <laughs> another thing that I'm largely in charge of. So. <laughs> Tagging everything, make sure it's getting locked. Right. So okay, so I'm gonna I'm practicing this. I'm going to. Um, this is the one with the water in it to start. All right, so I'm gonna do the switcheroo. Okay. Ready to watch? I'm watching. Yeah, uh, Nicole and I are both originally from near New York, so this is just Coney Island all over again. <laughs> I didn't Staten realize Island. you didn't know I was from Staten Island. Well, I knew you're from the New York area, oh, yeah. but I hadn't, I hadn't cried. You know? I didn't cry, really. Like, oh, but, uh, but now, well, I shouldn't have mentioned because now I want to do some soft dogs. But all right, <laughs> we're cool. Okay. okay. So which one is it? Um, do we want to label them one, two, and three, or can you point them and, and so people one, can yell in the comments? Two, three. 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 Okay. I, I know one, there's like a delay. Two, three. But I'm I'm curious to see one, what the people in the comments say. Two, are. three. Come on, Michael and Guido and one, James. One, two, <laughs> three. <laughs> uh, there's a a a broadcast delay. Oh. It's so okay. it's yeah, which made Mad Libs really fun. Um. I'm gonna say I I got distracted when we did our talk about New York. That was on purpose, wasn't it? Oh, uh, hey. <laughs> Look. That was on purpose. I got distracted. I'm gonna say it was one. One? Yeah. All right. You guys can keep commenting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this rubber band off, and if Jesus, you're right, <laughs> my stuff. I I won't let it get too far. Okay. Ready? Yeah. One, yeah. two, three. No. Oh, I'm bad at this. Okay. <laughs> so not one. So two, three, two, three, two, three. I didn't. I don't think I had a predetermined bias, so the Monty Hall pro problem does not apply. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Monte Carlo. That's what you. Monte. No, Monte. Monte Hall, right? No, I know, but try the Monte oh. Carlo. Two. Two. Right here. Yeah. All right. All right. So. If they're all empty, I'm gonna be annoyed. <laughs> they can't be empty. You saw me pour water in. Yeah, but you're Trixie. No. My desk is still dry. So I okay, lose. so it's got to be this one. All right. So this one, because you must have gotten it right, I'll do it over the trash can. <laughs> so all right. There we go. Okay, over the trash can. By must have gotten it right. Gita says three. That was three. There was a where did you put it? Okay, so yes. this is also discrepant you, event can I see inquiry. What's in the cups? Can I see what's in the cups now? Can I see what's in the cups? You saw what was in the cups. No, you had something like absorbent. <laughs> so, I win. I win even though I lost. So there are, <laughs> you know, there are questions to ask. This yes. Is, this is the inquiry. Right. Um, Pretend you're not a smart ass like me. <laughs> so, so you know, it was just tap water. Mm -hmm. You know, I can do this even where I show them where I right. fill the tap water. Um, they know what Dixie cups are. They know what aluminum foil is. Yeah. They know what rubber bands. They know how gravity works. Um, so the it only should. thing that works is that there was something in there to begin with. So in this one, there is. Let me see. No. Something. Oh, it's like gel. No, yeah. it's like ooh. <laughs> oh, okay. It is a type of substance called a hydrogel. Yeah. And this Look particular that. one is called sodium polyacrylate, okay. which is. A, fun to say, and B, uh, fun to play with. Squishy. It is squishy. <laughs> so, Nicole, or our viewers at home, yeah. um, what do you, uh, do you, do you, th what do you think sodium polyacrylate gets used for? Um, absorbing <laughs> liquid. Absorbing things? Yeah, absorbing liquid. Is it like so those little packets of stuff you're not supposed to eat? Those are, yeah, the, well, those are desiccants, so okay. that's related. Okay. But uh, I don't think that's My sodium polyacrylate. My ignorance is uh, here's, here's a clue. Um, okay. We'll probably be talking about their main use tomorrow around noon. Something with babies. Oh, diapers. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we're having a little baby shower in here tomorrow. There's a baby shower at the office tomorrow. Um, so this stuff is... Michael wins. He says something absorbed it. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. So this stuff, if you, if you take a dry diaper and you tear it open 
there will be um, a layer of kind of cottony stuff in there, and yeah. also uh, some little um, some little crystals mm -hmm. that look like. Oh, it's oh you've got a dry. Okay, I was wondering how much of it was in there. Okay. Not much. Yeah. Not much. Instant snow. Why is it say instant snow? Well, that is also another use for it. Okay. Um, for. Oops. If I add some to this stuff, and here, this is another type. Oh, okay. Then it doesn't. Oh, it's bubbling! Sorry, you guys can't see. I'm <laughs> like, whoa! Look at it go! It doesn't make. Uh, oh, it's not really doing anything anymore. It doesn't make this hard-packed stuff here. Oh, I see. It makes fluffy, wondrous stuff, which yeah. they use in Hollywood movies when they need oh. fake snow. Oh! So I could put this around my Dickens village. Yeah, um, you can. You well, can. except for the cat. So they'll they'll take this stuff, and yeah. you can make you know with this amount of instant snow, you can kind make this amount. Nice. Of snow. Um, and somebody's explaining to me two different forms of uh, the chains gathered together. So okay. um, sodium polyacrylate, the the first stuff we had, kind of looks like this, and then um, Michael mentioned silica gel. Silica is okay. the um, desiccant that's in the packets and clothes. It doesn't swell as much, it just sucks in the water. So sodium polyacrylate crystals look like this, and when water comes, they go whoop, and they hold the water in the middle, uh -huh. so it doesn't get out, yeah. but they have to swell up a little bit. Which is the stuff. Yeah, the, yeah. well, the, the first stuff, the oh, stuff the first that's stuff. The, the, the diaper stuff. This is the same kind of stuff, but instead of going, whoop, it goes, whoosh, so it makes a, like a flake. Okay. And okay. it's nice that's and fluffy why. and... Um, and you can let this sit, and it'll get, if you bake it, it'll get to yeah. look back like it used to. But if we let this sit overnight, it'll be little powder again, because um, it dries out. So uh, so this stuff is, is, in this class called a hydrogel, a silica, I think, the silica gel, I think, is, is in that class too. But okay. it's just stuff that does this motion to trap yeah. the water. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So, um, Guido actually said, uh, I wanted to say a piece of diaper in the cup. <laughs> Having the delay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> seconds. He's in Germany, by the way. Oh. So <laughs> that is quite a delay. So there you go. They, it, it, the extra speed, the light photons to get to Germany. So thank you, Guido. <laughs> so, yeah. So, you know, that's, that's something that uh, you mm -hmm. can make sort of a game of it. And, yeah. You know. That's really cool. A little less dry. Ha, ha, ha. I'll oh be my here god. for the next Oh night. my god. Oh my god. Yeah, so so here's the thing. I've I've been living I, I don't really live here. I have an apartment, but I've been living in this office so for says. like <laughs> a year and a half and there's still stuff that I haven't actually played with, which is really fun and exciting. Um if you've ever seen me do a demo anywhere in the last year and a half, I've probably borrowed something from here. All those crater, well, except for the flower and the cocoa powder, you should buy that. Um, all those, but a lot of the crater demos and the comet demos and the supernova, all that came from from our storeroom here. So, yeah, it's fun. Um, but I'm gonna stop playing with the diaper goo and talk about something serious. Is is <laughs> so Illinois is one of the states uh, that is is looking to adopt the next generation science standards, mm -hmm. and so educators, science educators, now have to really. Um, refocus you know, people who, who are new teachers and people who have been in service for a long time have to refocus their, their teaching mm -hmm. to adapt to these new standards and new curricula that are coming out. So what um, kind of things are, are we doing in preparation for that? Um, well, they have the, the Next Generation Science Standards, the NGSS books out now. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, uh, National Academy of Sciences was uh, Published it, so there's a you know a desktop dead tree version yeah. you can have. Um, we have several copies around here. We do have several copies so that uh, we can reference them and also we can lend them out to teachers, so we don't have to kill so many trees. <laughs> um, but they're they're really really good. Um, I think the what's really going to be helpful for educators is all the reactions to it, which are going to be people um, writing books on. Okay, so if you um, if you want to do lesson planning with these, this is a way to do it. If okay. you want to do um, field trips with these, this is a way to do it. If you want to do professional development with these... So these are the supplementary materials that are being created right. now, right. I guess, the, now that they're actually finalized. The user guide yeah. to, the, to the NGSS. And um, 
you know, so it it's not, um, I don't know, it's not the Wikipedia of of science standards where it's no. just super easy to use and just catches on immediately. It, like, uh, there are colored charts. There are colored charts. It, it, which it intermeshes. Some people like. I like colored charts. I know it, it's a lot of them. Um, <laughs> well, uh, I like them, but they are they are sort of dense to navigate. Yeah, that's that's. Um, right. So that's where these user guides are going to be great, but. Okay. In a nutshell, the really great things that this does is to um, to first of all pare down the um, the topics mm -hmm. so that you aren't doing you know so much uh, minutiae like on everything. Mm -hmm. um, it's you know it's not so critical that you have 20 different metrics on how well they're doing with um, cellular biology, also evolutionary biology, also you know zoology, also botany. Um, you can just say life sciences, and then we're going to sort of you know cover the foundations of that. Mm -hmm. um, and also there there are a lot more interconnections with this. Um, they're on those colored charts for every um, grade level and uh, and topic. There's one column that's uh, cross-curricular connections. Mm -hmm. um, so that's looking at how do you promote literacy with this topic? How do you promote math skills? How do you connect to um, reading comprehension? All, all this stuff. Um, and also, the the topics change. There's there's three topics. Um, there's physical sciences, which includes engineering, mm -hmm. life sciences, and uh, earth sciences. Mm -hmm. Um, well, Earth and space. Earth and space. ESS. Sciences. Yeah, that, that's the one. I, I remember that it was ESS and so right. Earth sciences. And then there's engineering, which is kind of a fourth topic. I think it's, it's, it's included. Yeah. Weaved, but then sometimes it has its own, like in mm -hmm. some of the high school standards. I have yes. This is where it gets right. confusing. <laughs> right, and, and the upper levels that they, they separated out a little bit, yeah. but they have a lot of the same um, topics. Mm -hmm. So they'll have. Um, Instead of each being sort of its own territory with its own set of rules, um, actually sort of realize it's sort of like we were talking about with the moon. Like it's all the same yeah. stuff, just different environments. Um, so there will be systems, and they'll talk about systems with physical sciences. And you know, so in fifth grade, maybe when you're doing physical sciences, you're looking at systems like um, uh, bridge systems and looking at a trestle bridge and how that shares weight and doesn't collapse. Then you look at systems with the body, and you look at the digestive system mm -hmm. and the immune system. And, um, and then you look at systems with uh, geology, and you look at the rock cycle and um, the formation of the solar system from cosmic dust. Mm -hmm. So you look at all these systems and um, and show how systems is a scientific topic and how it relates to foundational material and all these different subjects. Um, and so it's a big part of looking at the nature of science, so that you really get that science courses in schools are less about uh, memorizing mm -hmm. and and writing down all the vocabulary words and more about understanding why you're looking at this and why you're looking at it in this way. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because I I think that sounds like a good thing, but I've actually had some people who don't like the NGSS. They think they're not enough co science content happening. What do you? Where do you stand? What do you think about it from looking at it? I mean, neither of us were trained as as teachers to begin with. Right, we're seeing it right. more from a scientific background, but I'm curious what your take is on that. Well, I think that um, it it will be immediately difficult to transition, and so you know maybe you won't get as much. Uh, you won't get into as into some topics in depth, like right. like you would before. Other topics you'll get more in depth, so there'll just be some trade-off. But overall, I think you know if you um, ingrain these scientific concepts and the foundational stuff with students, then um, you first of all give them the tools to mm -hmm. uh, to look into those topics on their own if they're really interested in uh, dinosaurs then they have tools to systematically teach themselves about dinosaurs right. instead of needing you to teach them dinosaurs. Right. So even if you don't have time, they can do it on their own. And also you should And they have... have the internet, which I didn't have as a kid. Right. I didn't have children in high school. I right. Mean... <laughs> right. And 
Um, but you have to learn how to research. Yeah. Even there. Yeah. And then if you want to be a scientist, you, you know, from kindergarten are doing things like professional scientists do. Mm -hmm. um, and so that will help you if you actually are interested in going to the field. Um, and doing the sort of, you know, projects that it, it takes a lot of pressure off teachers, I think. Mm -hmm. um, they, they don't need to have, um, you know, it, it's not the days where you, your teacher was a font of knowledge and you walked into the classroom and absorbed it all like a sponge um, and then they closed diaper. your head back up and, yeah, like a diaper. They closed your head back up and they walked off. Yeah, um, yeah. Which you know, doesn't seem to work that way. That doesn't seem to be how humans learn. It's not, it's not how humans learn. <laughs> I think education research has showed us that eh, it's not the best way to teach. And Some it, people do, but not a lot of us. It, it, um, it's been something that people have known that that's not how people learn for a while, mm -hmm. but it's not it something that they could do filter. much about because yeah. you still need to get all the, all the knowledge from it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in the 19th century, they knew that this was not a good... That really? just scooping knowledge. Yeah, Dewey, um, who okay. did the decimal system. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, talked about you don't just like scoop knowledge. Okay. You got to teach them how to be yeah. how to be knowledgeable learners. Um, and but you know you still needed to absorb all this knowledge because otherwise how would you know? Right. But that's not really true today. If you give people foundational learning materials, then um, they can look up on smartphones. They can, you know, they can get the knowledge some way el somewhere else to, right. to build on the scaffold that you start them with. Yeah, yeah, or have a discussion, even. Um, but, you can communicate with people across the globe like you couldn't before. And the transitional period in between there is really tricky because, you you know, five kindergartners of five years ago were not getting yeah. a strong foundation, but they were having access to the Internet, so they would build it on these things, and it would partially collapse, and then they'd make up stuff to do it and, and fill in gaps on their own and have incomplete knowledge. And... Um, and so I, I think partially the NGSS is a acknowledgement that um, we're in a an information uh, saturated age where we need to focus on shaping knowledge, not just shoveling it at people. Yeah. Anymore. Okay. And then this, but this is going to change how teachers approach their lessons. Some teachers who've been in the field for five, ten years, decades. Um, in states where it's a, uh, in states adopted. where it's being adopted, mm -hmm. or in states even, you know, it may even be affecting the other states too, mm -hmm. um, how they teach and how they change what they're doing in the classroom. I, I think it I think it will, but I, thinking of the teachers I know and thinking of how, what I would do with it, mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think it means that they're going to be teaching different stuff. I right. think it means that they can drop the... <laughs> Every teacher I know, including my mom, who's a teacher, um, has those lessons that they're like, I don't even know why I do this. <laughs> it's, I'm really, you know, I know the standardized test is coming, but yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, they can drop those now because okay. really that's just a content lesson that they, you know, they need to memorize the, you know, the tiers of, of classification of biological right. uh, creatures. So we can drop that cuz but and do the lessons that they already know work well mm -hmm. and this will show them this is why that works well right. so they can pour that knowledge over to other lessons and you know i sort of picture putting all your lessons on sticky notes and putting them on the ngss fields and saying okay, oh, okay well i'm i got 90% of this covered i just got to come up with a lesson that does right. this one and i'll do it similar to the lessons that i liked and i knew were effective anyways and i'm now have tools that that are helping me understand why that was effective, and right. this new one can also be effective. Yeah, I, I, it, a lot of what we're doing with we have some in-house curricula here um, with STEM Center and a handful with CosmoQuest is we're looking at them now, going, oh yeah, these fit the standard, mm -hmm. you know, this, this, that, and the other one, um, or we can pick a topic. So yeah, like you said, you can use the same, you can use the same lessons. Um, but I think, I mean, I hope it it gives teachers more time to be able to do more hands-on inquiry-based stuff. Yeah. Like like the diaper. I'm just going to call it the diaper. <laughs> and uh, teachers like that, students like that, and yeah, having it yeah. as part of your uh, standards means that schools will, uh, you know, treat it mm -hmm. in, in a meaningful way. Right. It doesn't seem like a line item yes. anymore. It seems like 
something it's that should be core. Cool. Yeah. All right. We are pro NGSS here. We are. Um, so Guido says amen to the memorizing versus understanding, and James says two because he's <laughs> apparently really fun. He's still in the show game. Yep. <laughs> well, Want to do another one? I'm going to get. And meanwhile, I'm going to take my iPad out. I think it's in here. I want to try and give a. Yeah, we'll do that after. We'll see if I can get it connected. We can skip the areas that are packed, but. Yeah, that's true. That's why it won't be so. So, so much. I'm going to do something fun, and I hope it works because it sometimes gets tricky. But okay. I've got. My I, favorite thing in the world, my second favorite thing in the world. I have a terrestrial comet, dry ice. So I'm going to put it in some water. Hang on, hang on, hang on. And I like this Liquid water. Liquid nitrogen is my first favorite thing. I obviously. like this water. I like this water because, or I like this bowl because it's clear. So if I put it in, and it starts bubbling. And get stuff everywhere. I use, I've used this bowl for things before. <laughs> I don't remember what. Probably for things comet. I should be worried Probably about. Probably comet. Or... Well, All right. Astronomy. I've got a piece of string covered in soap. Okay. And I'm going to attempt to do... What? 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 No. What's happening? I'm going to attempt to make a bubble. Oh, cool! Sorry. <laughs> I'm way too excited. Mostly this was an excuse to get soap all over your desk. It smells like soap. I, I'm okay with this. It does smell like soap. This, is this might be too wide time of a this bowl, month. But... The second time this month that I have dry ice on my desk. Oh, what's it doing? It's actually spitting at you. It is. Okay. The bowl is too wide. Aww. So what I'm going to do instead is... This... I can't see what's happening under the smoke. I'm you can see under there. Oh, I can. Yeah, I can see the water. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh my gosh! <laughs> ah, hot smoke bubbles. Ah, that's why I have those paper towels over there for this reason. <laughs> womp, womp. Don't touch my desk. <laughs> There's sort of soap all over your I desk. I know. Okay, don't so, touch my keyboard. This Look at is that. a good Look at that. Halloween, we're slightly behind the times, but this is a good Halloween thing uh, called ghost eggs. This is sort of ghost frog eggs. But yeah. you can get something, um, if you get a, a smaller bowl, you can get one big bubble that rises like this and then pops all at once. Oh, wow. Um, and uh, you can also get a tube, and if you have the fog coming through a, through a tube, you can make dip the end in and make little, like, yeah. Bubbles that sit on the on the table. Um, <laughs> it's not even that cold. So, I think Nicole knows, but do you know what this fog is? Um, we could wait for, like twenty minutes for the comments to yeah. catch up. Yeah, <laughs> you, you could just say, "Where's the fog coming from?" It's uh, carbon dioxide. Well, the the tr the opaque stuff in the fog. Oh. Is not. Oh, well, it's the um. It's, it's, is it water vapor condensing out of the air? Yes, yeah. Or sort of not condensing, but yeah. Yeah, a, a lot of people think because you get it when you put dry ice into water, right. they think somehow the dry ice is making water from the bowl rise up, but right. it's not. It's uh, just the air right above the water is really mm -hmm. saturated with water, um, and the dry ice cools it down <laughs> and makes, <laughs> makes a fog. <laughs> Bubbles like in a mad scientist lab. This also gets used a lot in Hollywood to make fog for atmosphere and also for acid effects. So when somebody yes when somebody gets you know dropped into a tank because the Terminator <laughs> pushed them <laughs> that makes sense. It makes this. Oh oh, I'm having issues. There we go. And I don't know if you, the microphone is actually picking up the sounds of this. Oh yeah. It's very, like... Soothing. Yeah, sort of a white noise in a... This is how the Ninja Turtles got mutagened. <laughs> I'm so glad we have the same cultural touchstones. <laughs> <laughs> As you can imagine, this office is a little ridiculous at times. Sometimes, yeah. Um, if you want to wipe your hands off... Uh, yeah, let's see. I will try and get the mobile version going. Um, okay. And also, uh, so I shared a picture yesterday of um, 
sometimes I walk into this office and I never know what I'm going to see. And I walked into the office with uh, Colin and Sean Herbert, who was in a like the second episode of Learning Space, um, just hunched over these cups with, with this fog going everywhere. And they were carbonating their coffee and tea with extra dry ice that was left over from some thing, I don't know what, uh, and tried to keep it from going all over the STEM center. So sometimes, you know, even lunchtime, we're, we're goofing off and doing some, some ridiculous things. It turned out all right. It, it, was, was... it was a little, I mean, when Jack said something about some, something that carbonic changes, acid. Carbonic acid changes yeah. the taste of, of what's going on anyway. Yeah. A acids taste bitter, like when you leave coffee brewing too long or you oversteep tea. Mm -hmm. um, so adding carbon, carbonic acid from the dry ice, solid CO2, means uh, extra acid. I don't know where I'm going with it. There's no room in my cart. Oh, well. you, you leave it on the desk. I'll right. clean it up later. Um, since we are already at an hour, uh, I'm going to, uh, let's see, I think I have the iPad working. So let's try just sh giving people an idea of the uh, sure. storeroom. I hope, I hope you guys, you guys can hear, hear me. me. Hello. Hello. Okay, the, okay, audio, the audio is working. Okay, you can hear it coming out the other side. Um, um, how do I turn the camera around? Ah! Okay, there we go. <laughs> so. so, of course, we're mid-packing because yeah. we're moving to a different spot on campus soon. I was bragging about the organization, but it's... Uh, all of these are empty. It's really sad. Uh -huh. All the bookshelves. Um, it does end up... It's, this isn't the cleanest part There's here. a sign. We do work at STEM. <laughs> so these are all of our goodies. And we have a bunch of kitchen supplies over here, a lot of different consumables. Um, all our veneer probes over that way. Um, we have astronomy down at the end there. And then uh, geology, uh, environmental science, which is sort of the bridge to biology. <laughs> and then Look chemistry. Owl pellets. Owl pellets. <laughs> owl bark. Yep. Um, chemistry, including uh, chemistry. polydensity bottles and uh, physics, uh, a lot of electricity stuff here, and then math stuff and uh, sort of toys for demos and things, and then our outreach at the end. Hey, yes, these are the kits that go with specific outreach projects. And we have this table in, so these are all the things that Holy people moly. have returned <laughs> recently. So these, these are the are recent the returns. people are borrowing soon. Um, you guys do have a system rockets, on this table. <laughs> rockets. Flashlights and then. Who's doing rockets? Um, I was a teacher Somebody. who went to uh, a NASA workshop with some kids in Huntsville, Alabama. Cool. And they made the rockets and they didn't get to launch them all. So she oh. Them when she okay. Them. So she's borrowing I the think I last remember that. and the igniters. I think I remember that phone call. <laughs> awesome. So this is our, our fun little STEM center. Yes, you got a pre you got a brief look at this if you uh, answered our, our survey and saw that behind the scenes video. Um, but this is where I stand and stare at the bins and try and come up with new demos and take things to conferences. So this is, our, and this is just one lab, but there's like wet labs back there with. There's some, a wet lab, but that's really packed up. And then there's yeah. a storeroom that is full of boxes. It's where all the hot plates are. Yeah. 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 So. And all our robotics Lego kits. And then our new planetarium is in a second storeroom. Yeah. <laughs> It's full of empty boxes to be filled and planetarium goodness. And you used to have an 8-inch telescope, which currently resides in my garage. <laughs> because I do the public nights here. I no, swear, I it's not for personal use. I use it on campus. Let's head back to the computer. I don't know how good the audio is on this thing. Uh, I swear, I use it on campus, but I just am too lazy to carry it. Okay. okay. <laughs> I hope you... I hope you... Uh... I hope the audio wasn't too bad for that. Um, so, uh, that's our, our little resource. That's just part of our resource center, the part that's not packed up yet. Um, and I know people are trying to get in their last minute requests for things like Science Olympiad, mm -hmm. which is in two weeks. When, when we move, we're going to be unable to lend for a bit. So yeah. some people are borrowing beforehand, and then we have some requests that are immediately right. we'll have After. to unpack first yeah. <laughs> so that they're yeah. ready. So hopefully that all goes well. Yeah. So. It's daunting, but it's it's all coming together. It's a lot, yeah. <laughs> um, Nicole's very dutiful in her packing. Other people, who I could mention, have not really started. I, when my brain can't work, I put books in boxes. That's what I do. 
still. That's the only reason. Well, she started saying there. books is books is for boxing up. I've been up early. All right. Thank you so much, Colin. This was Thank fun. Yeah. We made a mess of my desk, uh, but no one died, so it's okay. Worse. <laughs> it's been it has been worse. Like I still have mud on my keyboard from the comet I did for Weekly Space Hangout. I really hope it's from the comet. <laughs> No, it is, actually. And not, like... Most of it is. You come in disgusting and just get it all over the keyboard. No, some of it is just... Yeah, some of it's use, but the, the, the dark spots are mud. <laughs> I can track it. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I will go over our schedule, then maybe I'll give you the last word. And, um... So, uh, today is Thursday. It's an unusual night for us. Um... So Friday would be tomorrow is the Weekly Space Hangout. Fraser Kane hosts that. Um, I will not be in attendance as I'm uh, going to be doing another workshop and then heading out of town for the weekend. Um, but Fraser Kane will be uh, going through your space and astronomy news with a whole bunch of astronomy uh, journalists and pretend journalists like myself. Uh, and then Sunday night is the virtual star party. I don't remember the time off the top of my head. I don't know if they've gone in any earlier, but it uh, there is an event. If you go up to um, if you search for virtual star party on Google Plus, so it'll get to their page and you see their event. Um, and you can look through the telescopes of some of our amazing amateurs who hook up their webcams and image software. Um, there will be no astronomy cast on Monday because Pamela is in Indonesia uh, speaking at a, uh, a young astronomers, I don't remember the whole acronym, but a young astronomers conference in uh, Indonesia. So they recorded an extra episode this morning. You can go back to the astronomy cast feed and check that out. Uh, and then Wednesday back around is Learning Space again where we'll be talking about science at sci-fi convention. So check that out. Um, that's our schedule. That's what's coming up next. Colin. Do you have a last parting thoughts about STEM? Yeah, well, I, I want to thank you for having me on, and I want to thank people for watching. And um, I think the, the take home I would say is, um, you know, you can do science any way you want. It could be a hobby. It could be, mm -hmm. um, you know, just something you like reading about. It could be something you do professionally. And don't let anyone tell you when you can do science and when you can't and what the limits of science are if you want to study biology in space, then study biology in space. Yay! You do citizen science, too? Yep. <laughs> I know you, most of you guys already do. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Colin. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, and I will uh, see you next week. Bye!